Okay, here's part two of the live feed. <laughs> I edited it down and uh, divided it up. This is now developing the clouds. Uh, the first part was putting the sky in on a large canvas, and now we're going to start developing the clouds. Okay, for a cloud, I took some purple and added some yellow. Now I'm gonna put in a little bit of blue. I don't want it to turn too green. What I'm doing is looking for a muddy color to be at the bottom of my clouds. That's turning too green. Well, we're gonna put a cloud right here because I just splattered on this. <laughs> okay, so here's some purple. Here's some purple and yellow. Here's the yellow, bringing it up in there. Put some cerulean in there. The bottom of your cloud is going to be more weighty because of the moisture. Uh, rain clouds in particular. Uh, this is wet on wet. Now I'm coming in with some white. It looks pretty scary right now. That's okay. It's got to. You got to start somewhere. Light touch, pulling it over. I'm traveling this way. A very subtle diagonal. And scumbling. I rinse my brush, pull in some more white. For the big cumulus clouds, the puffy clouds, okay, I've got just white on the tip of the brush. I'm laying it down and I'm scumbling As I drag down, all right, here's the application of the white, all right, with the tip of the brush. And I'm feathering it. And then I begin to scumble it down. See how? moving that kind of splayed randomness of the brush of the bristles all right i've got some more paint on my brush so i'm going to just kind of lay a little bit of that muddy gray up there Again, tip of my brush has the white. And then I scumble it down. Now, you see, this is rough. This bottom area is rough and has streaks in it. But each layer 
it'll get a little more defined and a little more defined. So don't expect it all to happen right away. Here's this area up here. Again. Just bringing the tip of the bristles, charging the brush, or getting plenty of pigment, paint, on the end, laying it down, and then begin to scumble downward. Not trying to cover completely because, I mean, clouds are forever changing, breaking up and moving. And so these areas here, where you see that blue sky, that's perfectly normal. All right. So we got to start on our clouds. You can see the gradation. I'm gonna go back and work on my blue sky a little bit. You know, I told you it was gonna be a little bit rough. Well, it's set up and it's dry. A lot of this on the mural I did with rollers to cover a, a fairly large area. And I really didn't have a big expanse of blue I had clouds that broke up the area. All right. When I was working the mural, these colors this third, this third blue, and that third blue, I had pre-mixed in tubs. Like, you know, margarine tubs or whatnot. So that I stay consistent from day to day. I didn't keep mixing my colors. And I didn't go out and buy quarts of paint. It was way too much. Um, actually, people are surprised at how little paint it takes to do this, my beginners put way, way too much paint out on their palettes. It's amazing what you can do with a dime or a quarter's worth of paint. All right, so here's my darker blue, and then I'm coming back into it with the tips of my brush. I'm upside down. And again, I'm stumbling. And the nice thing about this is if I've got an area, if it's a little too rough, I'll just put a little more cloud there. I did a big, huge sky in the Atlanta airport back in the 90s. I actually did use spray um, paint. I mixed up my custom colors and I had a compressor and I sprayed it. Uh, it's not there anymore when they did the, uh, was it 1996 Olympics in Atlanta? They remodeled out at the airport and it all got covered up. So that's one of the disadvantages of doing public murals or even private murals. I do them in homes and then the people go and move, can't take their mural with them. All right, so I'm scumbling. In other words, sc scrubbing. I can come back in. If I decide I've got a cloud that's too big, I can cut it back down. 
I'm not covering heavily. This scumbling, what's nice, it lets the things that are underneath come through. I'm turning this around as I go because I'm on a tabletop. If I were on an easel, I wouldn't be doing it that, quite that way. And actually, if I was on the wall, I wouldn't be doing it that way at all. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, you know, if I decide I've got this cloud way too big, I can come, whoop, too much. back in and cut it down. Again, please make comments, suggestions. I'll get back to you. I just can't do it and paint at the same time. I am watching the feed over on my laptop while I'm doing this. Uh, so at least... <laughs> At least I know I'm right side up. <clears throat> oh boy. At least I know I'm right side up. All right. One of the reasons I cut that, these clouds down a little bit down here, I need to emphasize, uh, especially for you beginners, um, pay attention, go outside, look at your clouds after I've posted the first time on the mural, I had people sending me pictures of clouds because they became cloud conscious and were paying attention to the skies. But that was one of the giveaways about how the earth was round is that the clouds that are closest to the horizon are proportionately much, much smaller than the clouds way up high and above your heads. So my blue has more application now and it's looking smoother. I tell people, yeah, when they come to my classes, they just have to trust me when I tell them to do something. It may not sound like the right thing to do. It may not be what they're wanting to do. They just have to trust because I can see 12 steps ahead. I have been painting my entire life and I know what it's gonna, what's gonna happen to it. Um, I try and equate it to somebody who's just starts cooking. If you deviate on the recipe, you're taking chances, but if you've got a veteran cook, they don't have to measure. They just dump and go because they know what it's going to do and what it's not going to do. That's experience. There's nothing that can take the place of it. So just paint. Just paint. Learn from every piece that you do. You may not be pleased with it, but you've learned something from it. All right. So I'm going to go now to a smaller brush. I'm going to define some small clouds here because we're already halfway through our hour. Again, this um, video will eventually be on my YouTube channel, commercial time. Lynn Looney, Lynn with an E, on YouTube. All the tutorials at this time are free. I've got some that are for advanced. I've got <laughs> some that are for intermediate, and I've got some that are for rank beginners. And I've only got, I don't know how many, 40 or so because I'm just one person. Okay, here is that purple and some of that phthalo and some cadmium yellow 
mostly with the purple, to make a muddy color. A gray, I don't like to use black. I almost never use black. I almost never use Payne's gray. It's gotten to be a joke in our class. <clears throat> okay, smaller clouds to the horizon. Smaller clouds. This is very wet, very thin. The bottom of this cloud is going to be parallel to the to your bottom or the top of your painting. Oh, wrong plate. While this is still wet, I'm dragging in. Here's some that we did earlier. This is this is dry. This is not blending. I'm scumbling on top of it. Okay. You hear me scrubbing? That's the scumbling. And as we go up in the sky, the billows get a little larger. Ugh, I really picked the wrong brush today. Sorry, gang. It's usually not quite so bad. All right, see, I'm really charging the tips of the brush. Okay. Putting that color up above, and then as I bring it down, I'm just wiggling in random directions. disperse in those clouds. All right, we want to do some big billows up here. All right, I'm scumbling and making this very translucent. In other words, you're seeing that blue sky through the cloud, which you normally do. Also under the fans today, they'll dry fast. Now, Taking our mud. And putting in that part of that billow. I'm using two different brushes. I'm laying it down with one, and then I'm dispersing it or diffusing it with a second brush. And then I'm gonna go away and leave that alone and let it set up. I'm gonna do one down here.
I don't really have any paint on this other than what I'm picking up as I'm scumbling. And I'm coming back. I don't want to do this too much while it's wet. Let's see if you can get a delineation. Right now, I'm taking just the corner of the brush because I don't want to introduce a third brush right now. This side doesn't have much paint, so this one I put the paint down with and then I flip it and use this side to blend. Again, I'm doing kind of a smaller, more controlled. I'm putting, the, there it's more obvious. I've got the paint on the end and this side here, see there's no paint. Come in here, put it down, flip it over, scumble. Put it down, flip, scumble. If I want to emphasize the bottom, I just put some of that paint down and I scumble it. Working quickly. And I'm not worrying about blending every single thing. That part right there is what looks what it looks like whenever the clouds are dispersing. Whenever they're, they're moving across the sky and changing. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna do it, but I am. Here's the fourth brush, third brush, third brush. Now, same principle. I've got paint. I've got paint on cor one corner that I'm putting down for the highlight, and then I'm flipping it over and using the other corner to drag it down and blend. See, this is this is dry up here. I don't remember which corner I did. Okay, I just blotted the paint off. And then flipping it over and scumbling. See, I'm laying that brush almost flat to the surface. I'm using the whole, whole part. Look at my <laughs> liver spotted hands. Oh, jeez. Okay, all right. <clears throat> I need to get some more paint. Take a break, watch that. The original canvas is 24 by 36 inches, two by three feet, with about an inch and three quarter depth. This is a canvas uh, that is called gallery wrapped because it is finished on the edges. I'm gonna flip this around, hang on. 
I stretch this one myself. I buy the, the stretcher bars, put them together. This one, these stretcher bars are, are thick and wide enough. They're stable enough that I don't really need a, a, a center support. This is plain cotton duck, cotton canvas. This, as you can see, the staples are on the back. The staples are on the back. And then I gessoed, excuse me, I gessoed the entire thing, including the edges, if you're just now getting here. All right, and then to finish it out, I also paint and take the painting all the way over the edge. And then it's good enough for presentation. You can show how I show in galleries. Okay, <clears throat> now to a smaller brush now, because now we're going into more detail. Again, I'm getting one corner. Let me blot this so you can see a little bit better. I'm getting one corner with most of the paint, most of the pigment. I'm laying it in, and then I'm flipping it around and using the other side to scumble it to blend. And remember, if you've got these heavy cumulus clouds with the rain in them, that bottom edge is going to be parallel to your horizon, okay? Okay, oh, excuse me, had that in my mouth. Um, I just rinsed my brush. It's got a little blue in it. I think this is the one I was using for blue. All right, and I like the fact that it's not nice and smooth and even. This gives me a better scumble than this brush, which is in actually better shape, has a lot more bristles. but this one is not gonna give me a scumble nearly as good as this one. What this one's doing, if you notice, you see, even if I'm using the edge, you kind of see the whole um, bristles across the, across the whole brush, and that's not what I want to appear. But this one's good enough to put my highlights down. Now, here we've got the start of a bigger billow. Now I'm gonna come in here and a little random, a little offset from what I first put down so it doesn't look too staged. And this is fairly dry. I mean, I rinsed it out, but I blotted most of the water out of this brush. And you can hear as I'm scumbling. And see with that application, it gets brighter. And see, this is what I don't want. So, scumbling it, look at that, how nice. And see, this scumble here, I'll do it over here, was from having a lot of pigment put down at the top of the cloud, here and here, and then using this blending brush, the scumbling brush, to draw that down into the heart of the cloud. So it blends this way. And then you come back with another layer 
this being diffused and letting that blue from below come through, that gives you a tone for the white puffiness of this layer to contrast against. Does that make sense? See, if it's just white on white, you're not gonna see the billows. You've gotta have either the blue or the gray to be able to see those billows. And again, blending it. If you haven't visited my YouTube channel, I'm inviting you to go check it out. It's basically in its infancy. I'm just now getting going, guys. I've only been putting up the tutorials since the first of the year. And I have ideas on a lot of them. A um, few things happened. Life got in the way. And I had a few delays and a little uh, minor setbacks. My father passed away. Uh, my grandkids started school. Um, you know, like I said, life happens, but we're still plugging along. All right, I'm coming back to my grays. And making these billows a little bit bigger in scale than these down here. I don't even know. I think we're cloudy today. If not, just the next time you're cloud gazing, pay attention to the scale of the clouds. And of course, there's lots of different kinds of clouds. This is primarily a cumulus cloud that I'm doing right now. But what I can do to problem solve, for instance, over here on this side where my blue is still a bit ragged and not well um, blended, what I can do is just take some of this, uh, not that, some of this mud, just kind of put a little bit of a tone on. And then come back. Again, the darker is going to tend to be underneath, but we're not very dark. But what I've done sneaky me is I've broken up the blue so you don't see all those streaks and then a nice nice soft blend there and again I can let that set up and dry. I'm getting the end, the tip end of the brush, laying that down and then scumbling it into Here's one I did earlier. This is all dry. I'll be sure and take some of that off the edge. And I may go back a half a dozen or more times 
because acrylics will dry slightly darker than what you put down. So it's forever changing. Your painting is forever changing. That's another reason why I skip around is to give that area over there that I've just done time to set up. I'll bring my attention over here. Go back to that one. Okay, we're about to the end of the hour. So if there are any questions, you're most welcome to put them in the comments. I'll get back to you and I will go ahead and finish this piece and post it later so you can see the finish because I'll ditz on it a while and I'll go ahead and record that so this will be part one the live feed will be part one and the finished piece um, will be part two. That might work. Might be a good way to handle it. And as the clouds get smaller toward the horizon, we'll go to the smaller brush. I've got two Instagram accounts. One is my name, Lynn Looney, and the other one is Lynn Looney Studios. Lynn Looney Instagram is mostly my paintings. The Lynn Looney Studios, I try and feature my students' work and the workshops that we do. Uh, what we do in there is I invite folks to bring whatever it is they want to try. We don't have, um, usually we don't do, all do the same painting. I do have requests for that, and I do teach that. In fact, I will be teaching that in September. Uh, we're going to do a floral, and everybody's going to do the same thing. But um, usually in my classes, I invite people to bring whatever. Uh, so if, they're, uh, if they love birds, they can do birds. If they like landscapes, they can do landscapes. And I had a number of requests for watercolors, so I'll also bring my watercolors so folks can try out both. Doing this type of sky in watercolors is a different approach altogether. Okay, but there you see your smaller clouds go into your immediate, intermediate clouds go into your larger ones. And the mural uh, had much larger at the very, very top. And another application. See, it helps to, it makes that, uh, that whiteness pop. I hope this is helpful. Hope this may have given you some ideas about possibly trying something new and different. And again, if you have any questions or any feedback, let me know and I'll get back to you. All right? Okay. Oh. Thank you. Appreciate you joining me. And... 
as these live feeds hopefully get better and better, I will do them more often and for things that you request. So I'm open for subjects. And I'm gonna finish that sunflower that you didn't get to see because I hit the camera and you saw the ceiling of my studio instead. So that one I am gonna finish and I'll do it right side up. Thanks so much. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. And I invite you, please, to subscribe, like, share. And uh, if you have any uh, special requests, by all means, put those down in the comments. And I'll try and address those with future videos. Thanks so much.